Hello everyone, and welcome back. So today I'm really excited to bring you a video about Mirror. Now this is one of my favorite projects in DeFi in general, so um, it's something I think is going to be really of interest to you, and I think it's really innovative in this space, so I can't wait to dive into that. Before we get into that, I do want to talk about the DeFi Innovation Telegram that I've been running. Uh, overall, it's been a great experience running this chat. Uh, the community has been fantastic. We've just been talking about different projects, protocols, etc. Um, I also was able to share a couple job openings in DeFi, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely check out the link in the description below. And of course, you can always follow me on Twitter if that's how you want to stay up to date. So back to the Mirror Protocol. Now, as I mentioned, it's one of my favorite projects, and uh, that's because they're basically bringing U.S. equities on chain. Now, of course, there's limitations and restrictions with that. Um, if you purchase a Mirror asset of, uh, say, Apple, you don't have voting rights, uh, you don't get dividends, etc. cetera. Uh, but that said, this is a way to you know, democratize finance and open up the equities markets to anyone. Now, in addition to that, they also have liquidity providing opportunities, so you can actually earn a return on just holding these stocks in general. So being able to return a pretty significant APR on holding stocks in general is, is phenomenal and a great way to de-risk holding uh, what you might consider a risky stock or asset in your portfolio. So it's really interesting how they actually set this up and how they're actually bringing uh, the value of these equities on chain. Uh, they are on the Terra network, but I'm mostly going to be talking about uh, the Ethereum network and, and what they're doing on Ethereum. So I'm going to provide all of the links to the documents below, but uh, I'm going to go through a high level of how this actually works. Essentially, anyone can mint uh, what they call a mirror asset or M asset, and these are going to be those equities or stocks that I was telling you about earlier. Now, to do that, a user has to lock up 150% of the asset's value in collateral. So for example, if Apple is trading at $100, you'd have to put up $150 of collateral to mint one of these mirrored assets of Apple. Now to target the price of the asset and make sure that it stays in line with what it's trading at on the stock market, uh, the mirror system actually reads the underlying price through an oracle, and that oracle updates the prices every 30 seconds. If you're not familiar with oracles, I'll put a link below uh, explaining really what they are. It's a little complex, but basically it brings data that's off-chain, on-chain, uh, so that you can interact with it with smart contracts. Now, when the token price deviates from the Oracle's price, aka the target price, uh, traders are incentivized to basically arbitrage that. So they're either incentivized to purchase or sell the asset, or to mint or burn the asset, uh, and that helps keep the price uh, at peg. So to show you how that's been working, I'm going to compare the token price to the actual price on the stock market so we can get a sense of how well these assets are keeping their peg. So first up is mirrored Invesco QQQ. Uh, if you're not familiar, this is a very large ETF that basically tracks the top 100 stocks in the NASDAQ. Um, and so you can see on CoinGecko, that's trading at $337. And on the stock market, it closed at $336 today. So great job at keeping peg. Uh, next up is Twitter. Uh, the CoinGecko price is $70.54. And in the stock market, it's uh, trading closed at about $70.86. So again, very close. Next up is the Mirrored Silver Trust. Uh, this is a fund that basically tracks the price of silver. And you can see the iShares Silver Trust closed at $23.04. So again, very close. So this is really encouraging. Uh, I've looked back at historical prices, um, and it looks like they're pretty good at maintaining PEG, about you know at most a 1% or 2% difference that I've seen uh, based on the research that I've done. But of course, I always recommend that you do your own research before deciding whether to invest in any project or protocol. So I want to go through the options for yield farming on the Ethereum network now. Now, as you can see, for all of their assets, uh, you can basically provide liquidity to the stablecoin and then mirrored asset pair. Uh, so you can see here there's a Google stablecoin pair, an Apple stablecoin pair, uh, etc. There's about a dozen of these or so. Now, one thing to note before you decide to provide liquidity here is that the stablecoin you're going to be using is the UST stablecoin. Now, this is Terra's native stablecoin. Real quick, I'll just pull up the CoinGecko page for UST. Uh, you can see right now it's trading perfectly at peg. And if we look at the last 90 days or so, you can see it's done a pretty good job of keeping peg. Now, Terra maintains the $1 peg a little bit differently, so I'm going to link this Coindesk article below uh, if you want to read about how that works. Basically, UST keeps its peg through the Luna token, which uh, is the token that uh, presides over the Terra network. So if demand for UST is high and the price is high, uh, new UST gets issued and can be purchased for $1 of that Luna token. Now, if demand for UST weakens, Luna will be released to the market in exchange for UST, uh, which will then be burned. So a uh, bit different of a mechanic to maintain price, uh, but definitely do some research on that if you're interested in providing liquidity. 
Now, just going through these LP positions, um, as you can see, most of the APRs are about 100%, and you'll be earning the mirror token, uh, which is the governance token over the entire system. I also want to point out that if you decide to provide liquidity, these are APRs, which means they're non-compounding. So that means if the APR is 100%, you would earn 100% of your money back after one year. But if you decide to compound that in regular intervals, like every month, uh, your return will be substantially higher. So I think this is really interesting, right? If you have a traditional equities portfolio and you're looking at uh, maybe handpicking a single stock or a couple stocks, uh, this might be a good option to diversify. The reason being, uh, let's say you wanted to buy $2,000 worth of Apple. Well, through Mirror, you would put up $1,000 of UST, that stablecoin, and then $1,000 of Apple. Uh, so you'd be diversified because you're not just holding Apple, but in addition to that, you're earning uh, at current rates about an 100% APR, which is of course phenomenal for just holding a stock that you would otherwise probably want to hold. Now, of course, you are earning the protocol's governance token and you have to kind of decide uh, if you believe in the project long term and if that's a token you want to hold. It's also important to look at the tokenomics behind the project, so I'll link that in the docs below uh, where they do a pretty deep dive into uh, breaking down the supply of Mirror and then how it's allocated. I also wanted to post the FAQ uh, that they have on Gitbook as well. They basically go over the mechanics of how they keep these uh, synthetic assets pegged um, and then you know what that means for you as the end user. Now there is one other thing uh, I want to touch on if you're not interested in earning that mirror token or the governance token. Uh, so as you can see here, Harvest actually uh, allows you to stake uh, the mirror LP tokens in their platform or a selection of them. And you can actually earn the farm token, which is Harvest's token uh, instead of mirror. So you can see the APYs are pretty similar, um, but the difference is you're earning the farm token. So basically you have to make a bit of a judgment call there to see if you want to earn your rewards in Harvest token or Mirrors. Personally for me, if you go through Harvest, you're just dealing with a little bit more smart contract risk uh, because you're interacting with the Harvest protocol as well. Uh, so just something to consider uh, and think about as you're doing your research. So that's pretty much it. I just really wanted to introduce you all to this project because I'm really a big fan of what Mirror is doing um, and I want to see more of this innovation in DeFi. Now, of course, make sure to do your own research and due diligence before investing. Uh, this project is certainly not without risk. I believe Mirror started back in January, so it's a few months old, but it's certainly not as tested as, you know, Compound.Finance um, or some of the bigger players in this space. So thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or definitely join that innovation telegram. Everyone there is very responsive and helpful. Uh, so far, it's been a great community, so I'd really recommend you join. So thank you all so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all in the next video.